So on Tuesday afternoon, just after three o'clock, um, my children and I were sitting in our living room here right behind me, uh, and we heard sirens. And for us in this area, that's unusual because I live in a very rural area. Um, so as we listened, the sirens appeared to be getting closer and closer and closer. Um, and at one point, they appeared very close, and then they shut off. So at that point, I walked out onto my front porch, um, and I continued to see other sirens or hear other sirens coming um, from multiple directions. And as I looked down the road, I noticed multiple sheriff's uh, cruisers parked in the road. And on the one end, they were actually blocking the roadway. Um, I'm actually the former post commander to the area. So I called the chief deputy and I said, hey, can you tell me what's, what's taking place? What's going on out here? And he said, hey, Kevin, what's your address? And I gave him my address and he said, we have a report of a shooting there. He goes, it looks like this is probably a swatting incident. So at that time, my son who was standing out there with me said, hey dad, it looks like they're walking up the road with rifles. And I said, well, yeah, there's a report of a shooting here. Um, so I actually walked out into my yard and made contact with actually uh, the lieutenant and the captain, both of whom I had previously worked with. Um, and they continued to you know, check the area they, out of an abundance of caution. Uh, they went to my neighbor's homes and, and checked them, but just a complete and total waste of, of resources and, and putting folks' lives in danger. Absolutely. The fact that you knew some of these folks, the responders, uh, definitely helped alleviate the situation here. It could have been very terrifying and scary, perhaps, if you didn't make that call. You didn't know why people were coming up your front lawn with guns. Um, so, again, the fact that that happened, it, I mean, was your family worried? It's the Christmas holiday, after all. Yeah, so um, my, my children are adults, 21 and 22, so they came, they were actually outside with me. Um, you know, they heard my telephone call with the chief deputy, so they, they weren't concerned. Um, but, you know, you take this and, and put it in a different environment with somebody else who's not familiar with this, or they weren't outside and the police show up and they either enter the residence or, you know, they, they order folks out of their residence. It's a very, uh, you know, scary situation for folks. And the one thing that a lot of people don't understand, um, and in my case, and when I said lives at risk, anytime officers are going code three and they're running lights and siren, they're putting themselves at risk and also the motoring public that's out there on those roadways as they're going to this call. This is a hot call. It, it's a call of a shooting. So they're trying to get there to protect folks. Um, and at the end of the day, it's all for a hoax. You know, one of the other things I also tell folks is not only are they responding to that folks, but there's multiple officers. In my case, um, you know, nearly a dozen officers responded. The question then becomes, well, who's covering the areas where they're supposed to be? So that's why these um, instances are such a drain on our resources and, and, and a waste of, waste of time. It's, yeah. it's so unfortunate. And obviously looking up for a suspect, unless you have an, an update on that, but that's criminalized, calling in a, a, a hoax shooting. That is a very, very serious matter. Uh, I wanted to take it to a broader level here in terms of not your state representative, but U.S. representatives as well being swatted. Uh, back in June, the FBI launched a national swatting database after a complaint by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer who called them dangerous, disturbing, and downright terrifying. Okay, so again, this exists, this swatting database. What's the purpose of it in your mind? Does it really do anything to stop this? It seemingly is increasing. What needs to happen, not uh, on, a, on a national level, but on a state level as well? Sure. So first and foremost, our local authorities, and, and you know, I want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to the Licking County Sheriff's Office, who just did a great job with their response, highly professional. Um, but what it takes is, is cooperation from the, the local, the state, and the federal level. And some of the things that make these things so difficult to find the perpetrators is the different apps and the ability to you know, disguise your phone number and where things came from. So I think creating the database probably helps us start to determine where the, these calls are coming from. Um, and moving forward, we may have to look at some sort of legislation that, that may take a look at, hey, should we really be able to um, block numbers and not allow at least the law enforcement authorities to figure out who folks are that are making these calls and doing these things, putting lives in danger? Yeah, especially, I think, as technology advances with artificial intelligence, the voices that can be manipulated in audio calls, it's really frightening.